Tenorio. Ms. Carone, welcome to the Senate Oversight Committee. Hi. You have Thank three you. minutes. Thank you. My name is Melissa Carone. I am a resident of Wayne County. I have a background in IT and cybersecurity. I was contracted by PDS staffing to work with Dominion Voting Systems assisting with IT at the TCF Center. I started work at 6 a.m. on November 3rd, and I worked until 5 a.m. on November 4th. I returned to work at 10 a.m. November 4th and worked until 2 p.m. November 4th. I was initially supposed to return um, Returned back to work around four, but I was told via text through um, one of the other Dominion workers named Samuel, Samuel that um, I wasn't needed, that um, they were almost finished counting. Um, I wasn't going to mention this, being that it has been mentioned numerous times, I'm going to. I was initially supposed to be working. I was initially supposed to um, be working at the Department of Elections um, that was an order from Dominion Voting Systems. Um, they told me that I would be parking in a parking lot and I would be shuttled in through a shuttle. Um, I called my mother and I told my mother about this and my mom said, no, absolutely not. You're not doing that. Um, I also had a concern about that because I do have small, two small young children at home and I needed access to my vehicle. What I witnessed um, at the TCF Center was complete fraud. The whole 27 hours I was there, um, there was um, batches of ballots being ran through the tabulating machines numerous times, um, being counted eight to 10 times. Uh, I watched this with my own eyes. I was there to assist with IT. Um, these people on night shift, I had four people on night shift that I've known, one of them I've known for over 20 years, he approached me and said he had absolutely zero training whatsoever, um, contradicting 100% what Daniel Baxter claims, that they had so much training. He said they had zero. I watched these people had no idea what they were doing. Okay. Um, also, the uh, adjudication process, I witnessed numerous people walking up claiming they were both Democrats, saying they were going, they were sitting together, judging ballots all night together, all day together. I witnessed it all. I was on the main stage with all of the city officials. Daniel Baxter was in on the whole thing. And I am under the impression 100% that um, at least 90% of those workers were all in on this. There was not a single ballot the whole night, the whole 27 hours I was there that I saw that was for Donald Trump, not one, not a single ballot. That is, that is scary. That is, there is no reason for that. Um, also, I'm going to say that there was something going on at that um, Department of Elections. And it's clearly um, something that's very um, illegal that occurred there. And I am grateful to God that I did not go there. Thank you. So uh, Vice Chair Lucido has a question. Sure. You were employed by whom to do what? Okay. So I am a freelance IT worker. Okay. Um, I was employed by PDS, P as in Paul, D as in David, S as in Sam, staffing to work as to assist with IT work for Dominion. The, at the, the software TCF, company. Dominion Voting Systems, correct. I was with Nick Atanamagas. He's why a, were, my manager. Why, I apologize, but this is very... Why did they feel that they needed to have assistance there for the software? So, um, the, a couple people have asked me the same question. I, I cannot answer that. These people were very secretive, and I will say that these people were very, very um, secretive and just really pushy. When it, they, I, I never did I ever admit I was a Republican to these people. The comments that they were making were disgusting. Regardless of Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green, doesn't matter. I'm getting right to the heart of it. What was the instated purpose that the software to, company needed to have the assistance of support staff for IT? I believe that it was because 
Nick and Samuel, that are permanent employees of Dominion, Nick is a part owner, that they had to be together on the stage working together so they so it had to it looked like they had um assistance with it now i was also not allowed to wear a badge or tell anybody who i was working with that's fine so it your opinion that it was them that needed to be there you don't know anything if it was contractual you don't know if there was anything that was going glitchy which means that there oh, was i know of a lot of stuff that but my question is factually which yeah. means today, as you sit here, is there anything you can tell us yes. that was happening with the software where Nick and okay, so Samuel I, had to go assist mm -hmm, in this? Absolutely. What was that? Okay, so Samuel was missing for about three hours. Um, when he returned, I said, where were you? Um, he said, I was at the warehouse. I said, where's this warehouse? And he, I said, is it an Amazon warehouse? I don't know, what, what kind of warehouse is it, right? And he said, we call it the Chicago warehouse. And I said, okay, so it's in Chicago? Because they're from Colorado. I said, so it's in Chicago? And he said, no, Melissa, it's in Detroit. We call it the Chicago warehouse. I said, okay, and I just walked away. But it, there was something very secretive that he was doing. There was also a data, they said a big data loss right before they sent Samuel to this warehouse. What time and was that? That was a, pro when Samuel went to the warehouse, um, that was approximately, it was in the afternoon. I, I believe it was around two or three. Is that on the third or the fourth? The third. Thank you. I'm okay. I, you have written testimony for the chair? I have my second committee. affidavit, and I have what I was speaking off of just Could you now. send that to us, please? Absolutely. Include your phone number, if you could, Absolutely. in case we have questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Before you go, please, sure. um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. When you discuss, testify about ballots being counted multiple times, mm -hmm. what are you basing that um, analysis that they were counted multiple times? Okay. So, um, I'm sorry. So the tabulating machines, um, when uh, a ballot jams, it puts up an error. It'll say discard or recount. So when it puts up that error, when a jam occurs, the correct way to go about it is to discard the whole batch, take the ones that have already been tabulated, put them back into a pile, put the one that jammed on top, and then discard it, discard the whole thing, and then rescan them. They were not discarding. So they were just rescanning, 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 counting ballots eight to ten times, just recounting them. They had absolutely no idea what they were doing. So you're, you're saying that they were literally op opening up the box, taking the ballots back out of the box, and then sending them through again? Uh, no. They okay. were just taking. So I want to be clear a ballot, on this. Okay. So when a ballot was. When the error came up on the PC in front of them, and it said that a jam occurred, I would go try, because it happened so many times in the 27 hour period. Each machine, it did it between two and three times an hour. So, because these were folded ballots, they're mail-in ballots. So um, when it occurred, that, and then it threw up the error, you know, discard, rescan, as I just stated, you are supposed to take the problem ballot that got um, jammed, put it on top of the um, whole pile, discard it, because that's why the option is there. If you do not discard it, it is recounting it. So they would take the ones that were, already, say, say ballot number 25 had an issue. You had already went through 24 ballots. So you're going to put them back all in a pile, and you're just going to rescan it? So it's counting those 24 again, instead of discarding those 24 and restarting. Oh, but that, I mean, that's what I was trying to ask. I mean, so they're literally taking, you're Did I saying, answer correctly? you're saying that you're, they're taking ballots that already went through the machine, taking them and scanning them a second time. That's absolutely what I said. Yes. So help me understand, because I haven't worked in AV counting okay. center. I've been to my precinct. And when our ballots go into the tabulator, there's no access to them after they're accepted. 
I mean, they go into a sealed box. There's oh, no, no these ones, no, I, I've heard that too from other states that they do drop directly into right. a steel box. No, the steel boxes were behind them, which I could say a lot about that too, but I won't. But they were using those for barriers for the poll watchers so they couldn't get close, the steel boxes. But no, they were 100% in the counter's hands. This, all this, this whole process, they were allowed to do whatever they wanted to do. I, Nick and uh, Samuel that worked for Dominion, they were on the stage. They had a contract employee, me, and another one that was from Texas. I have his name right here, Miles um, Smiley, 90-year-old man there to assist with IT work. Didn't, he did not have any kind of background in IT and worked in and lived in Tennessee. So this man was just walking around aimlessly. You know, I was really the only one running around like crazy helping these people. Thank, thank you for that clarification. I was not not aware that it. Uh, no, and they I mean, were the responsible. That, the machines they, I've been exposed to don't work that same way. So I was just checking in on that. Senator Tice. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out the whole line of everything here. So you were trained to work with the equipment and the tabulators themselves. Correct. And they were going to send you to the Department of Elections. Initially, that is where so I was scheduled. Tabulators at the Department of Elections. That's what we're. That's the, the main question here, huh? Because I was trained on the tabulation and adjudication process, and how many people just came up before me stating that they saw people walking in and out of that Department of Elections with ballots. Okay. As then, I stated, I was not supposed to even talk about this today. And but then I'm as going to. they're scanning, they have a pile of them. They're putting them through a scanner, and the pile, once it's gone through the scanner, is still fully accessible to the person Absolutely. who's doing the scan. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. They could scan them 50 times if they wanted to. Any other members have a question? Senator Lucido? Yeah, I... I Senator... This, this is interesting. You were trained to oversee tabulators. Is that what you told us? I was trained to assist with IT. In tabulators? And the adjudication process, correct, sir. Who trained you to use Dominion. your technique on the tabulators as it relates to the IT? Dominion. Dominion did. Was it their representatives that came to the TCF center? It was the owner of Dominion, Nick Economagnus that came to the TCF Center, which is extremely insane because he's like the top of the top with Dominion, which is, he's missing. When he's did gone. you meet with him at the TCF Center to get your training? Six, eight, oh, I, okay, so my training was in Allen Park at the hotel they were staying at, right off of Southfield Freeway. It was November 2nd for one hour. The day before the election. November 2nd, correct. The day sir. before the election. Yes, sir. One hour training, was it done by video or was it done with a tabulator? It was done with a tabulating machine and an adjudication machine in a room, in a conference room. And all we did was walk around it and um, nothing. We were given a binder. I have it right here from Dominion about all their image cast, about how their software, uh, software works. I have every I have every Dominion employee here. I have the ones that were at how many were with the you warehouse. in this? Who, how many? Five were, total. Five total. Two contract employees, three permanent employees of Dominion. Let me just say this: there was one permanent employee of Dominion. She went by the name of Danielle. Her real name was China, which she told me later. She's the one who told me Nick was a part owner, which was confirmed later on. Um, she was acting very bizarre the whole night, would start crying, would start saying she couldn't handle being there. Okay. I saw the van come in at 4.30 full of ballots. That She left an hour before that, had someone pick her up. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, as long as we get her testimony, I would be intrigued to look at whatever you have Absolutely. through the chair. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you. Um, Vice, hold, hold on. I have another question for you, ma'am, please. Uh, Vice Chair Irwin has a question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if I were to take a ballot, an absentee ballot, and I were to run that through a machine <clears throat> multiple times, and that ballot were to be counted multiple times, 
Um, is that machine uh, going to um, reflect those votes in the vote total at the end of the day? And is that um, ballot going to be um, recorded in the poll book eight times or something? I mean, what's the... Why, why do you think the poll books were so off? Well, they were, they were <laughs> off a little bit less than they were in previous elections. So unless no, your allegation off. is that... They were off, 100%. Excuse me. Excuse me, members of the audience, please respect the witness. Sorry, I mean, you asked me a question. What do you, yeah. what do you expect the answer Excuse to be? I was hoping for an answer, but I don't think I'm going to get one. Excuse me. I couldn't hear what was going on because too many people talking over each other. So I, if you could please, Mr. Sure. Vice Chair, finish your line of questioning. I'd like to hear the end of it, please. That was the end of it. There was just one, there was just one question, which was that, you know, it, if this were to happen, it would show up in the tabulations being off. And we know, they were do off. we know to what extent that they're off? They were off. Right, yeah, we know that. So why are you asking, what are you asking me? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ask you um, if, if Sir, someone were to, go ahead. if someone were to go and run the same ballot mm -hmm. over and over and over again, that would, that would end up showing up as a massive discrepancy, right? Did and I we've, and we've added up the discrepancies. Did I ballot and ran it over and over and over again? You Just did? one ballot uh, or a batch of 50? It, Either way. I mean, the batch right. of 50 is going if to be even more. If you take one and you run it over and over and over again, yeah, people are going to notice that that one has been um, ran over and over. I had numerous right. challengers come up to me and say, what's going on here? One guy got thrown out because he right. took a picture of me. Sure. I'm just, I'm just wondering why the numbers at the end of the day aren't matching up with the stories that we're hearing. I'm trying to square that circle. And your, I know there's going to be an investigation of all of these allegations. Your question is as good as everybody else is in here. Yeah, there's why going to be an investigation about this, it and we're going to look up. into all it's these details. It's not matching up. Ma Everything that happened at that TCF center was fraud. Every single thing. Every avenue was Excuse taken me. to commit it. Please. Appreciate your passion, and, and he, but the, his, he feels his question was answered. Appreciate that. I do have one additional follow-up. Sure. You mentioned observing uh, ballots arriving yes, sir. late. Do, do you have knowledge of where they came from? I cannot say that for a hundred percent. I do not know a hundred percent. Okay. Do I assume where they came from? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Senator uh, McDonald, thank you. I'll be brief. Your testimony was very compelling. So I just want to go back to what I asked Senator Colback. Where is the Department of Justice in this? I mean, with, without arresting it, I mean, are they even looking into it? I mean, your testimony is unbelievably compelling. <laughs> So I, I'm just wondering, where, where are they? Okay, uh, I, I, your question is as good as mine. Um, I, so I did call the FBI on November 5th, and okay. I spoke with um, a woman for at least 40 minutes. Uh, the phone disconnected, she had all my information. Uh, she never called me back, I had to call them back. I, I, I haven't been contacted back since. Well, you would think that, did you contact anybody from the Trump campaign? Oh, yeah. I've Wouldn't they have a pipeline to the Department of Justice? Well, I mean... I've been talking to attorneys. What I said just now w regarding the Department of Elections and how I was scheduled to work there, that is coming out. That is coming out. Uh, th that, that will be coming out next week. There's a lot coming. I was not even supposed to talk about that, but there, a lot of people mentioned it. So you know what? I'm going to tell you guys about it because this is fraud. Okay. And there was fraudulent attack activity occurring there. Thank you. Your testimony was excellent. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you, thank you uh, ma'am, for being here. Next, yeah. we have uh, James.